All right, so let's take a look at these scattering events, which re result in uh, diffraction. And that leads us to Bragg's Law. So Bragg is the name of a scientist who basically came up with these relationships for this diffraction, these diffraction events. And so what he did was he envisioned this experiment where we have a crystal. And so here's a two-dimensional representation of this crystal. And so we have one plane of atoms here on the surface, right? And you can envision this going back into the page to be three-dimensional. And then we have another plane of atoms below it. And so that's the same type of HKL or Miller indices for a plane. So this is, for example, this could be the 100 plane. And so this is the next 100 type. And then this is the next one down here. So we just envision these as uh, the um, spacings between given crystallographic planes. And so the spacing we call D for interplanar spacing. And the HKL refers to the plane. So you could talk about the D11, or so the, sorry, the D100 if you're talking about the spacing between 100 type planes. So we have this crystal, and we have a source of X rays. And this, so this is the incident beam, which just means the, the first beam. And we uh, take uh, X rays, and they're all in phase, right? So this is the experiment we just saw. This wave is in phase with this wave. And so again, we only talk about two x-rays, but in a real experiment, there would be thousands or millions of those x-rays. So um, when we look at this then, um, these incident, this incident beam of x-rays is going to hit the sample at some point, And then we're going to look at what happens. So um, Again, this is in phase, we have a certain wavelength, and it's uh, aimed at the sample at a given angle. And that angle is theta. So you see the theta here. So theta with respect to this plane A. All right, so these uh, x-rays travel to the uh, surface. And what we find is that if diffraction occurs, what will happen is a, the beam at this point here, P, will uh, scatter at the exact kind of uh, opposite side over here at the same angle theta. And so that's what you see uh, with this beam over here. And the second beam will travel into the sample to a certain extent. Um, and so now it's, so basically the first wave is meant to represent those that interact with the first plane. And uh, beam two is meant to represent what kind of penetrates the surface and interacts with the second plane. And so it reaches a point Q uh, and then travels out at the same angle, theta. All right, and you can imagine this can, to continue with more and more um, x-rays as we go on, but we're, we just need these two to kind of develop this relationship. So at these specific angles, theta, uh, these are known as specific Bragg angles if the x-ray beam diffracts, so if this actually occurs. So if this beam comes in at theta and leaves at theta, this would then be the diffracted beam. So what we look at in this case is the geometry here, right? So the first beam goes to point P and rebounds. And you can tell that if beam two travels the same distance, it puts it at the surface, uh, but then it travels an extra amount inside the material. So basically that extra amount amounts to the distance S to Q and then back to T. That's the extra distance compared to beam one uh, in how much it travels. So for diffraction to occur, um, what we have to have is these diffracted beams have to be in phase. So we're, we define diffraction as when that occurs, when these are in phase. So we know the geometric relationship, right? Uh, it travels this extra amount and it has to be in phase, right? So the wavelength, which is from peak to peak, they have to match. 
And so it has that extra length s q to q t has to be some integer of the wavelength. So lambda is the wavelength, and then it has to be some integer n, right? So if that happens, it will diffract. And so if we put that all together, we calculate the distance of s q and q t. Uh, what we find is that we can define that by the angle theta and we get what is known as Bragg's law. So this side over here on the right is 2d h gale. So that's the interplanar spacing and then sine theta. So basically that distance s q q t is this. So that's why the two comes from. Um, and then the other side is in lambda so the the wavelength so some integer of the wavelength and so for us when we're talking about um uh, when we're applying what's known as bragg's law here uh we're going to look at what's called first order reflection and that's when n equals one so when we apply this we're always going to have n equal one but just keep in mind that it can really be any integer, right? So it can shift over uh, one wavelength or two wavelength or three and still be in phase in accordance with uh, destructive or constructive interference.